publisher journey video of the day how expert how you guys doing um just want to document my journey behind the scenes uh, today i just published a new book how expert guide to 365 hobbies uh, an a to z guide the ultimate a to z handbook that talks about all kinds of category all, all kinds of hobbies from a to z so stay tuned for that book it's published on amazon as an ebook today I'll publish it as a paperback and hardback soon and audiobook once I find a narrator, okay? On Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google, and all the platforms out there. Stay tuned. Um, after that, I was also working on my next book. And this time, I kind of like... The way I come up with ideas sometimes is I do research, you know, with AI. I use or I just do organic research on Amazon or I, I tend to sometimes go with book topics that sold well in the past for my brand. Or work on books that haven't been, you know, haven't done well. Or sometimes, now, one of the ways I'll come up with topics is, sometimes I want to do a book that I personally would love to read. You know, so, and I thought about it, I was like, you know what, I, maybe I, I, I would read a book about marketing. You know, and uh, right now I'm testing out the books to be a little bit angled. It's not just a step-by-step how-to guide. That's organized and structured. It is still organized and structured, but it's angled in a uh, digestible way. For example, I've turned it into, I'm testing out doing 365 tips about a specific niche topic. So I, I thought, you know what, what 365 tip book would I read? And I was like, you know what, I would read a book about marketing. 365 daily marketing tips throughout the entire year. You know, one tip a day from January 1st all the way down to December 31st. Uh, the book is structured in that way. So I was thinking, you know what? I would read that book myself because I want to work on my I want I want to work on my own business. You know, I want to work on my own business. So I figured, you know what? I'll, I'll, why not just create that book? So uh, recently, I just came up with a topic, the idea, the table of contents. The book description. Um, I'm using AI to do that, but AI is not 100% sometimes. Okay, not all the time. Especially if you're doing a lot of um, a lot of points, like 365 points. There could be some duplicates here and there. So what I like to do is I like to ask AI, "Hey, analyze this table of contents right now. Does it have any duplicates?" And it actually had like around seven to ten duplicates in terms of the marketing tip. It could have been similar. So I said, redo it. Redo the whole table of contents from scratch and fix those errors. And I analyze again. Does it have any duplicates? And it said it has similar points, but the purpose of that tip is different. For example, one tip was about doing social media ads. Another one was about doing uh, Facebook targeted Facebook targeting ads so the outcome was different so I, I, let, I let that slide so I'm gonna double check again in terms of the table of contents to make sure the table of contents is solid as possible so quick tip if you're using AI don't just go with the first answer make sure and double check triple check and check as often as possible until you get the final best answer whatever you do especially with table of contents the outline the outline is very important before you even start doing the book because because um it's a it's a non-fiction book you know what i mean so you want to get the content as best as possible so make sure make sure you double check and triple check everything everything is good to go that's what i did even when you use ai AI is not perfect. Just like humans are not perfect, AI, believe it or not, is not error-free. There's errors, actually. So you got to double-check that issue and make sure it's good to go, okay? Make sure that's good to go. So that's what I would do, okay? If you're using AI, don't think, oh, I got it. I'm using AI, so everything's good to go now. Double-check, triple-check until everything's good to go. So... Yeah, so I basically have the best table of contents outline as possible. I'm on triple check again. 
that has 365 daily marketing tips to start growing, succeed in your uh, business, whatever type of business you have. So if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, or you work for a business, or any, any industry is a business, get this book. Everyone needs to learn marketing, okay? As I'm saying this, another idea popped up. Sales, that might be another book I do. 365 sales tips, because sales goes along with marketing. It's very similar, but it's not the same thing. But everyone says selling, you need to learn sales, right? Just like that, I believe you need to learn marketing, whatever industry you're in. So I'm gonna do a book about marketing. The next potential book, I might do one about sales, okay? I might do one about business ideas. I might do one about world recipes. I, I'm all topics A to Z, guys. I wish I could just publish a book the second I have a thought. It's not that fast, though, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, because it does take me three to four days to create and create the content and finish the book, basically. It takes me about three to four days. So, stay tuned. I'm working on it. And after that, I'll come up with the next topic. Other than that, any updates for my publishing business? Um, in terms of the books that I created with AI, here's an inter interesting thing that I found. Not every topic sells. Okay, e all of the books I've done with AI are all long, organized, solid, in my personal opinion, five-star content. 60,000 words at plus. Some books are up to 100,000 words. This Power Expert Guide to 365 Hobbies is a hundred thousand words. This is the longest book I've ever done in my life, and uh, that's why it took a long time for this one. But you know, what I've learned is that not every book topic sells, so but some books tend to sell better than others. And what I've noticed is the pattern is, is basically one book that sells well is a very unique topic unique topic there's another book that was unique that's selling well there's another book that's not that unique how expert guide to los angeles that is selling okay on a consistent way so you know but not all of the big topics are doing as well than the unique topics like i'm seeing not just like the unique topic books are not just selling one time. They're selling like multiple pieces at a time. So uh, that was kind of interesting thing I'm, I'm learning right now behind the scenes. Because I'm not used to like picking topics because I'm a publisher of authentic books back in the days by real life everyday experts. I wouldn't go with a topic. I would just go with the person. So whatever the person's real life authentic expertise and experience was, that's the topic I went for. Whatever that topic world was from A to Z. So I, I want to be honest with you. Unlike other publishers out there who teach you like a formula, how to pick uh, good topics, profitable topics, I didn't go with that. There's pros and cons to that. And there's pros and cons to the way I did it, hiring real life everyday experts, because the way I did it was authentic. And by doing it the organic, authentic way, I found unique topics naturally. I, I came across all kinds of unique topics without even realizing what it was. You know, sometimes when you gotta do keyword research, you have to know the topic in advance and then do the research. For me, I didn't even have to do that when I was hiring real life experts. I just asked them, what's your number one expertise? What's your number one passion? And they will tell me all types of hobbies. And by the way, another uh, idea is that if you're interested in niche topic, niche research, go get my newest book, How Expert Guide to 365 Hobbies. You're going to be introduced to 365 niche topics. It's, it's like a great niche research book as well. I'm going to go through that book as well, step by step, and see if, if, I, if I find a topic that I've never heard of, I'll go for it. I'll create, another, I'll create a book on it. Because one of my organic rules of thumb is that if I've never heard of that topic that's actually a pretty good topic generally speaking if I've never heard of that topic that's actually a good topic because generally speaking that book has less competition and I'm gonna be honest with you I've published about I don't know 10 to 20 books with AI this year in about three to four months and uh, I'm averaging about seven books a month, seven to eight books a month, I would say. 
But um, now, the ones you know what are selling, it's the book topics I've never really heard of. So my organic approach is a quick way to, you know, say this is a good topic or not without doing all the research on how many books are there on Amazon, what's the BRSR number for the top 10, 20 books for that topic. You don't even have to do that. If it's a topic, I'm generally speaking, if I've never heard about that niche topic, and it's an and and it has a Wikipedia page that verifies it's an actual topic. It's not just like it's a uh, it's a quest of I'm trying to you know. I want to try to change the world. That's 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 not a topic. It's an actual topic with an audience with a keyword, with a Wikipedia page showing there's actual people t searching that keyword. But it's a topic that's kind of like unusual. I've never really heard of. And guess what? I did a couple, uh, several books on those with AI, and those are selling. So I think I'm coming up. I'm I'm coming to another conclusion. Like. As you publish more, you just get to know more, more, and more. And it's just like another lesson I'm learning is like, maybe my formula is not to be like Dave, uh, uh, be like a, a Goliath. Okay, Goliath in my industry, nonfiction book industry is for dummies guy, complete idiots guy. Those guys, those big companies, they do big topics, big, uh, big categories, right? But maybe... I can go into the unique topics, the micro niches, the niche within a niche, because those big companies, they have a lot of uh, employees, so they got to go into the big niches. They don't really go into the small niches due to low searches. But for me, as an independent level, everyday publisher, I can go into those unique niches. And you know what's weird? Those are the books that are selling, because like I said, they don't have competition. You know, so maybe as, I, as I'm publishing more and more books, maybe I'll go into these unique topics. Instead of trying to be like Goliath, be like David. I can't pick up that big sword like Goliath holds. Okay, but I got a little, I got a stone, I got some five stones, and I got a sling, and I know how to hit that giant. And that's what I got to do. Be you. Don't try to be somebody else at the end of the day. Whoever you are, whatever you you're best at. Okay, so that's the lesson I'm learning behind the scenes. Um, I might as well go. I know I want to go for all core categories, all topics A to Z, but the ones that are selling, I gotta listen. I gotta pay attention to, and I gotta repeat, rinse and repeat that formula. And I think I found a formula. Unique topics are selling, man. It's incredible. And the cool thing about unique topic is it has less competition, meaning it's easier not just to rank on organically on Amazon, but it's also when you do it's those the competitors in those uh, niche topics that have not not as many books. Those competitors don't turn it into multiple formats as an ebook, paperback, hardback. Those competitors don't do Amazon ads. Those competitors don't do YouTube videos. Those competitors don't go into other platforms. So it's just a lot easier to dominate a niche like a dictator. That was one of my first books when I was getting started called Dictator Method. That's why my YouTube channel is called Dictator Method because I had an ebook back in the days called Dictator Method, how to dominate your niche like a dictator. Not going to the big niches, but small micro niches. And it's, that concept still works with Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing. It's amazing. You know, it's amazing. So. That's a quick lesson of the day. Sometimes you think like you got to go into these big niches because it's big categories. No, but uh, they have way more competitors. They have way more competition. What's better is that you go niche it down. There's health, wealth, and relationships. But those are big niches, and I'll go into those. But in order to stand out a lot easier organically and with paid ads is go niche within a niche. What type of wealth? What type of relationships? What type of uh, health? And fitness and exercise maybe health and fitness okay martial arts what type of martial arts taekwondo what type of taekwondo you can niche down even more taekwondo kicks etc 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 so that's pretty much it publish your journey behind the scenes working on multiple books at the same time and uh yeah i'm enjoying what i'm doing and uh i feel like i'm just getting started okay Thanks for watching. I got to go click that link below the video. Take action. Get started.
check out my resources and uh, check out all my books from all topics A to Z how expert how expert publishes how to guys on all topics from A to Z visit howexpert.com to learn more talk soon take care bye